So CityMart is really a, a method. It's a method to look at how can we help the many thousands of cities and local governments in the world share the best solutions that can quickly improve the lives of citizens. We have uh, more than 50% of the world's population living in cities. And really, the most important services that citizens receive, especially those that are vulnerable, are coming from local government. Yet we put a huge expectation traditionally on these local governments taking the best possible decisions, having all the knowledge about what is possible. And the reality is that is very difficult for the leaders in cities. So we're providing them the tools and the methods to take much more informed decisions, which helps them solve problems much faster. It helps them to bring much more meaningful solutions to their citizens. And then on top of it, it saves a lot of money for them, which allows them to then invest in other important areas. There, there is a kind of numbers play against the system. So you have 557,000 city governments in the world, local governments in the world. All of those take everyday decisions about upgrading the health services, their social services, investing in buildings and infrastructure. Now that means that you're trusting that about 3 to 10 million public servants every day are taking a completely informed and perfect decision. There's no place where these people can get market intelligence. There's no knowledge resource where they can turn to, to understand, might there be a better way of doing this? So what we're doing, the cities we're working with are collaborating to build and have built the world's largest catalog of solutions for cities in areas like sustainable tourism, in energy, transport, uh, and so on. And these cities, these cities are opening this catalog to make it accessible, to share it, and to learn from each other and their experiences in using new ways of solving their problems. Which means that for the first time, those millions of public leaders can actually acts as a knowledge resource that allows them to take better decisions. And those decisions affect people's lives. You, you can't expect that a city leader in a small city in, in a remote part of China or even a remote part of Sweden would have all the information at their hands otherwise to really take the smartest decision. So I think we're, we're working with, with very high value challenges. A lot of them, I would say, are in areas related to sustainability, changing the behavior of citizens. You have Stockholm has very demanding citizens. They want to be sustainable. Many cities are struggling with citizens that don't understand their role in making, making their city more sustainable. Um, we have cities that are working with measuring in real time greenhouse gas emissions. But overall, I think cities are looking for more effective ways to provide services. And a more effective way is one that usually uses less resources, that usually creates more value through using less. And I think that is in itself a sustainable approach. And, um, and sustainability, what we see a lot right now, is cities are extremely concerned about the economic sustainability, not just of the services, but of uh, the livelihoods of their citizens. I think one of the most exciting things I've seen in this is the, uh, the strategic plan for Hanoi in Vietnam, which really tries to do, foresee a city that grows, I think, fourfold in size and population over the coming years, and at the same time tries to urbanize agriculture, because Vietnam remains uh, a very agricultural society. So I think that is, that is a city that has, um, has, where I've seen a kind of really major plan trying to achieve that. In, uh, then, of course, in Korea, in, in other parts of the world, there are a lot of debates as to how you grow uh, food in the city, how you maintain that. Um, a lot of this relates to air quality. A lot of this relates to, to other factors that need to be in place. I think many cities in the world are far away from having that reality. You wouldn't... In Barcelona, where I live, you wouldn't want to grow vegetables in your city because the air quality is so poor and you would basically contaminate yourself more than benefiting. So I think there, there is a kind of structural change here, but there's a lot of interest around food security. 
I think we are overlooking um, big parts of society that, that we today consider either whether they're disabled people, whether they're chronically sick people, whether they are um, people living on the, on the fringe of society that don't quite integrate. And what I would like to see is much more ability of including them, of, of reducing the barriers, and recognizing the huge political and uh, also economic potential of that group. I think we're, we're putting a lot of energy on, on aspects of environmental sustainability when really the story coming back, and it was Boris here in Stockholm that inspired me to realize that how in quite simple ways you can really in an unbelievably meaningful way transform people's lives and transform society by bringing down some of those barriers. So for me, innovations that, that are able to do that, that are able to bring as many people as possible to the table and, and into our day-to-day -day lives, I think are probably right now what is most, most urgently needed um, and would be most, uh, most innovative because not so much is happening there.